Shalom, shalom, and greetings from Teshua Community. I'm Ima Rafaya, and I'm coming back to you daughters with a message to encourage your hearts and to give you strength in the time that we're in. I know it's been a minute that I've been, uh, I haven't said anything to you daughters or give you any words of encouragement, but we've been busy here at Teshua with the cooking and the prepping and cleaning and working with our children, we're quite busy. Hallelujah, but I give y'all told off for even having strength and being closed in my mind, my right mind, that I'm able to help and assist at Teshua. Hallelujah. So Rayak has given me a teaching for the daughters and it's called the Elect Honorable Lady, Daughter, Woman of Zion. Her attributes of her beauty I want to begin this teaching, as Rayak has instructed me, that this is only directed to the daughters, mothers, and the women of Zion. I am not here to instruct any man, but as an elderly daughter, to speak only to the daughters of Israel. With that, I want to show the attributes of the elect lady and the honorable lady. Even daughter, these words coming out of my mouth, when Rhea gave me this teaching, it brought tears to my eyes because most women have lost their focus on what the righteous woman is supposed to represent. Her dress, her thinking, her actions, we're confused. But today, according to the Torah, I pray, Open up your minds, open up your hearing that you may hear this day on the elect lady of Zion. The word honorable, I want to start with that first. The word honorable, it means she is precious, righteous, honest, faithful, upright and virtuous, truthful, reliable, and in an hour like this, can I tell you that, I, if anyone wants to assist me, I want the person who's going to help me get the job done. So being reliable is very important today, daughters. Whenever you have um, something that you need to get done, and you have, I'll say, a, a, an event that's about to take place, you want daughters that are reliable, that's going to be faithful to help you get that thing done. Hallelujah. So she must be just admirable, Torah abiding. And you say, well, what does that mean? It means she's keeping all the commandments of Almighty Yah, His statutes, and it's not something that she practiced once a month, but it's a daily chore. You set your mind, which is your heart, to do that which is pleasing before Almighty Yah. A woman full of integrity. They are given to judges to judge the matter amongst the daughters of Zion. And you say, well, we shouldn't judge anyone. Well, I don't know where you got that lie from. Can I say something, daughters? Let me say this. Every day you judge. You look at the time. You know what time you have to be at work. You're going to say, okay, should I, be, should I leave? You have to be at work at 5. You're going to judge, well, should I leave at 4.30 or 4 o'clock? Can I tell you, you're going to judge which time because you know what kind of traffic you're going to have to contend with. So every day you judge. If there's a woman always sitting around you talking filthy and lewd, would you judge that woman? Why, sure. You, do you want to hear that? Now, if you're filthy and lewd like she is, then you'll want to be in the presence of her company. But if you don't want to hear that kind of filth, then you judge the situation. You say, well, today I won't sit around that individual. Well, you said second thoughts, I won't sit around her, period. So every day you judge matters and situations in your life. If your daughter comes home, she has a, a few friends she brought home with her, and one young lady, she's dressed like a boy, she acts like a boy, and she's kissing on other girls, do, are you going to judge that situation? Do you want your daughter keeping company with a little girl that's acting like a little boy? No, you don't. So every day, Every day you judge situations and matters in your life. So when people say don't judge, can I tell you why they say that? 
because there's a hidden agenda that they don't want you to know about them. So every day we judge. You make an assessment every day in your life. Hallelujah. I have been instructed to touch on these things today, daughters. And many of the beauties of this type of daughter, she is the pattern for all daughters, saved and unsaved. The way a righteous woman lives. She is an example, not only to just righteous women, but to those that are unrighteous. Because how are you gonna know which the difference? If you're living righteously and you've been walking this way 10 years or better, you should know what kind of garment to put on. An unrighteous woman wouldn't know how to dress. If she's been in the world and she's just used to letting it all hang out, then that's what she knows. But you being a righteous woman will show that unrighteous woman how to dress. And it starts with the mind. You hear the truth, you apply it to yourself, and you walk this way every day. I don't practice dressing like this once a month. I practice dressing like this every day. I cover myself. My body is for my husband, my ish. Nobody should see my breasts hanging out, my, my big fat arms. Nobody should see that. You want to, well, I want to cover my fat arms. And we as being righteous doors, once we come to the knowledge of this truth, we must learn how to cover ourselves. Oh, you say, well, I got big, pretty legs. Well, your big, pretty legs are for your husband to see, not for the world. I don't want every man looking at me and gawking at me. So that's how, once you get the, the truth, and the truth will make you free, it'll free your mind of those things that are not of Almighty Yah. I don't care what the world is doing, doors. Listen to me. Just because the world is going to hell, I'm not going that way. Yah has come. He's called many, but there are only going to be a few that are going in. I don't want to be a part of the many. I don't mind looking old-fashioned. I don't mind looking like an old lady. Can I tell you, I have a husband that loves me much, and that's all that matters. And even if you don't have a husband, you still want to cover yourself. Because can I tell you, when a man wants a wife and he wants a, a tough woman, he's not going to pick the woman that everybody's sleeping with, or that the whole football team, or the whole basketball team has slept with. He doesn't want that kind of wife. Hallelujah. So we, let me identify the elect lady and what it means. The example of the honorable daughter of Zion, the true assembly of Yahshua HaMashiach. And I want to start with 2 John, verse 1 and first, verse 2 John 1 and 1. It says, the elect lady and her children, the elder to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, the true Torah, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. When you come to the knowledge of this truth, daughters, you apply to yourself, and you apply to your children. You sit down with your children, you teach them the Torah. As you apply to yourself, you must get it into your children. You can't expect these schools to teach your children Torah truth. Because 99.9% .9 of the teachers are unrighteous. So it's left up to, to you, mother, to work with your children and to get that truth. As you hear your messenger, you must apply it to yourself, and you apply it to your little ones. Hallelujah. You must hear the leaders, the righteous men of Torah truth. I want to go to verse 2. It says, For the truth's sake, which dwells in us, and shall be with us, and shall be with us forever. Verse 3. The free unmerited love. And the favor be with you. Kindness, shalom, from Yahweh, our Abba, and from Yahshua HaMashiach, the son of our Abba, in truth and love. We express this joy and this imuna, this faith and love. Go to verse 4. 
I rejoice greatly that I have found of you children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from Almighty Yah. And now I beseech you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment to you, but that which we have from the beginning, that we love one another. And can I say something to you, daughters? It is easy for us to love our kinsmen because we have favor with them. It's easy for me to love my sisters, my brother. Can I tell you, I was there, I, I'm the big sister, so I kind of protected them. Nobody could do them any wrong. The only thing they had to say was, this girl hit me or that boy hit me. I was ready to fight. I watched over my siblings. As I was instructed by my mother, you watch over them, you protect them, you make sure they get home safe. So that was my job. So it's easy for me to love them because there's an attachment there. But once you come to the knowledge of this truth, we must learn to love the people of Yah, whom Yah has chosen. Yah does the choosing, daughters. You didn't get saved because of your mother's prayers. You didn't get saved because of your father's prayers. You were saved because Yah chose you. Not because of all the great works you've done, because there's none of us that have done great. If you look back over your life, you'll see your righteousness is as filthy rags. We must practice daily living this Torah truth. And can I tell you, daughters, it will make you free, free from you. Hallelujah. It says, and now I beseech you, lady, not as though I write a new commandment to you, but that which we had from the beginning that we love one another. And this is the love, that we walk after Yah's commandments. This is the commandment, that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. Yahshua HaMashiach has come to fulfill this book from the beginning to the end. There's nothing new under the sun. They said, well, they've done away with the Old Testament. Yah hasn't done away with the Old Testament. Because if you get, get rid of the Old Testament, you've gotten rid of Almighty Yahweh. Yah sent His Son, Yahshua HaMashiach, to fulfill the book, to show us that we can walk in this truth. We can learn to love each other. And as we're all striving daily to walk in this truth, we must be examples one to another. You say, well, no, you need, you say, if I'm young in this truth, even if you're young in this truth, you should, you still, should still strive for perfection. I expect my young daughters to shine, let their light shine as mine shine every day. I know we're all going to fall. We're going to have many trials and tribulations. But I expect us to get up with victory every day in our lives. Hallelujah. This is the sign of the elect lady. I want to go to Sharat, chapter 17, verse 10. And the elect shall praise his Kodash name, not his holy name, but his Kodash name, to proclaim the grandeur of Yah's works. Every day we should talk about how tough Yah is to us. If he wakes you in the morning, you should give Toda. You should walk in the victory of Yahshua HaMashiach because you are alive. What, daughter, can I say, whatever is in your mind, you can cast it down. Yahshua Messiah has given us power to cast down every evil thought, every unpleasant deed. You can cast it down and you can walk victorious. No, I don't always feel excellent in my body, but I press past that. And as I press past that, I feel a little better and better throughout the day. So it's a pressing that we must do as the elect lady of Almighty Yah. I want to go to verse 11. It says, He bestowed knowledge upon them. He allotted to them the Torah of life. And the Torah of life is Yahshua HaMashiach. He is our inheritance. He established with them an everlasting covenant. And he has shown us his judgments. Y'all say, if you do right by me, you keep my statutes, my commandments, I will give you strength to be victorious every day. Hallelujah. Verse 13. 
Their eyes saw Yahshua's splendor and his majesty, and their ears heard the splendor of Almighty Yah's voice. And he said to them, Beware of all unrighteousness. You don't have to worry about nobody else's unrighteousness. You have enough that's taking place up there. You must cast it down, daughters. I have enough going on in my mind. I can't worry about nobody else's wickedness and what they're doing. I have enough going on up here. And I have to strive daily, daily to do that which is pleasing before Almighty Yah. My actions, my deeds, how I treat the sisters here. And I have to do right by the whole king. And if anybody so old, uh, Ema Raphael doesn't do right by the sisters, they're a liar and they don't know Almighty Yah. Because every day I practice doing what is righteous. You say, well, she correct that sister. Well, that's what the mothers do. Can I tell you, mothers, if you, you let your children do what they want to do, you let them come in and just sling dirt on the floor or eat and never wash the dishes or come in speaking any kind of way, you don't correct that. Or they say, well, I went to school today. I'm not doing my homework. I don't think it's needed. You don't correct that. Or, or daughter, you're not going to wear that in my house. You're going to cover yourself. Yeah, you correct that. If you're a true mother, you correct that. And that's what righteous mother, you correct your daughter's actions and their deeds. Well, they're a woman just like you are. Can I tell you, everybody didn't start this walk when I started. I've been walking this way 44 years. I've been married 45. I've been walking this way 44 years. So I do have an experience with Almighty Yah. I haven't practiced, I haven't practiced wickedness, being deceitful. I haven't practiced that. So if I, as I have been an example to the daughters, they can hear me. I've heard the messenger, and by me hearing the messenger, I've truly been barabbed of Almighty Yah. He says, and he said, beware of all unrighteousness, and he gave every man a commandment concerning his neighbor. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. We have to first learn to love ourselves. The way you want to be treated, daughters, that's how you treat your neighbor. If you don't want nobody talking snazzy to you, then don't talk snazzy to your neighbor. Their ways are always before Almighty Yah. They will not be hid from His eyes. So the way we treat each other, the eyes of Yah are in every place. Beholding, listen, what He didn't say the tub. He said the evil and the tub. So Yah sees everything that takes place. And there's a messenger. The messenger is called not an angel, where they are fallen angels, but those Melikim that did right, they're not angels, they're Melikim. And they record everything that we do daily. Hallelujah. This is the dress and the clothing of the elect lady to live in a mature love, forbearance, and forgiveness. Doris, that's something we all have to practice. Because we've been brought, if someone does something evil to you, then you repay them with evilness. But that's why Yeshua had to come in the volume of the book to show us how to do it and to do it right. I want to go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. It says, put on therefore, as the elect of Almighty Yah, Kodesh and beloved bowels of compassion, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, endurance. And daughters, we, as the women of color, we think we can just speak our mind, disrespect the elders, you're going to show them how big and bad you are. That's not what Torah says. He says humbleness without fight. And being humble doesn't mean that you can't correct a daughter when she's doing something wrong. It means you know when to speak and when not to speak. No, you don't speak your mind. You study to be quiet. You ponder. And then when you come with the answer, then you speak the truth. But everything must add up with Torah. 
Not what your great-great-grandmother taught you, but what does this Torah say? Meekness. Not always willing to fight. You're showing somebody how bad and how tough you are because you're not tough. There's always somebody a little bit tougher than you. Long-suffering. Can I tell your daughters? Walking this walk, walking this walk you have to have long-suffering. Because every, and y'all says in my house, there are vessels of honor dishonor, the vessels of wood, gold, brass, which ones are you going to measure up to be? And can I tell you, learning, hearing this Torah truth, I want to be a vessel of honor. So that's why I strive for perfection every day. And that's why I have no fight, but I've learned how to be humble, how to be meek and long-suffering, and having endurance. As the children in school, they do sometimes they do the same thing over and over every day. Over and over every day. You have to have endurance. Well, do you raise your voice? Why, well, sure I do. Because I want them to get it so they'll stop that. So you have to have endurance, daughters. Colossians 3 and 13. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel, against any, even as Yoshua HaMashiach forgave you. So also, do you? We have to learn to forgive. Yeah, there are times it's in your mind, but can I tell you still, no, just forgive. Just forget it. If you know an individual is not going to change, you just leave it alone. But when something rises up, you still, you must correct that individual. And you can't be afraid of their faces. And can I tell you, gifts will pervert judgment. That's why I say I don't want nobody to give me no gifts. When you're not doing that which is righteous, I don't need your gift. Everything I need, daughters, I have. And I have a whole lot of what I want, too. Hallelujah. So we must learn to forbear, forgive, and above all these things. The bond, put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. And above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. Love is correction. And can I tell you, it stands sure. It does. I know who I am in Yeshua HaMashiach. I won't let no one back me down when it comes to this truth. First, I make sure I'm doing what's right. I want to be an example. I want to be a light, not just so the daughters of Zion can see, but so that the other daughters that don't walk this way, they say, I, I need help, but I don't know where the help is coming from. When they see me, they know that there's a difference about me. Not because I'm crippled and I limp. They know there's some, my clothing speak for me. Can I tell you, even when you dress this way, if you're vile and you loot, can I say, it, it, that overweighs what you have on. It does. It says, and let the shalom of Yahweh rule in your heart, to the which also you are called in one body, and be you thankful. We're called in one body. One, not two, not three one body. Yahshua came to fulfill the book. Yahweh was looking for one to sin. And there was only one that was worthy. And that was Yahshua. So he has come to fulfill the book that we may walk in all shalom. Being thankful every day. If you're alive, you should give your thanks. Torah. Hallelujah. Torah Almighty Yah. I can lift my hands this morning because Yah awoken me this morning. He gave me sweet rest. I'm closing my right mind. I know how to judge situations in my life. I know what is right to do and what is not right to do. Hallelujah. So every day I'm thankful because I'm alive. And most of all, I'm thankful because Yah has enlightened me with this truth. Hallelujah. Verse 16, it says, Let the word of Yahshua dwell in you richly, 
in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in song and in the Ruach filled with psalms, singing with free unmerited love and favor in your hearts towards Master Yeshua. So every day, daughters, you should praise Almighty Yah in your homes. You should sing songs unto Him. You should have a great delight that you know this truth and that He has chosen you. Hallelujah. He's chosen you. If you're hearing this today, daughter, He has chosen you. So pick up your mantle, put it on, and say, Yah, whatever it takes, I will be faithful, I will be committed, and I will be a doer of this truth. No, I don't want to be like the world. No, I'm not caught up in diamonds. Hallelujah. And having uh, name brand clothing. I just want to be covered. I like bright colors. I do. I love bright colors. I like being colorful. Even as an aged old woman, I like looking colorful. Because Yah has created all the colors. But I, I'm not trying to look young. No, I'm not. I want to look my age. I'm 66. I want to look that age. I don't mind the wrinkles and the lines. I don't mind that. Yes, my hair is gray. I don't mind that. That's the beauty of an aged woman. So my beauty is obeying the Torah, being examples that other daughters, saved and unsaved, can see. Hallelujah. Colossians 3 and 17. And it says, And whatsoever you do, do in word and deed. No, I don't tell the daughters, do as I say, don't do as I do. No, you do as I say, and you do as I do. I'm striving to be faithful every day. My commitment is unto Almighty Yah. He sent Yah sure to save me. You think I don't take that lightly. It's a personal walk. I'm not going into the kingdom because of Rayak's righteousness. I must go into the kingdom on what I have done that is righteous. As Yahshua has come to fulfill the book, I must not take that lightly, nor you. We must be examples one to another in word and in deed. It says, do all things in the name of Yahshua, giving thanks to Yahweh, our Abba. Abba is Father. He's our Father. We give him Toda every day, all day. You say, do you pray? I do. Why should sure I do? Can I, when I'm cooking in the kitchen, I'm giving y'all Toda. Thanks. Thank you, y'all. I'm preparing a meal. I'm telling him thank you. You're so kind to me. I have you much because you first I have I me. He first loved you. He first loved me. I was lost in sin. Doing everything that I thought was right and it was wrong. Once I came to the knowledge of the truth, those things that were not pleasing to him, I should start casting them to the side. I chose my friends more wisely. I want to people I want to be with women that are practicing this truth. Do you understand that? And I want to be an example with women that are practicing this truth. We being examples to each other. We encourage each other. You can do this, girl. And you can. Hallelujah. Total of 20 items, the elect lady, she must wear. There's a total of 20 items, daughters, that the elect lady must wear. And you say, what are they? I didn't know what they were either. But as a messenger, he puts us in this teaching. So grab hold, ladies. Hallelujah. Her clothing makes her honorable. Your clothing, what you put on, daughters, and that's the truth. Listen to me, daughters. If you got on something with your breast hanging out, you're not an honorable daughter to Zion. You're wearing pants. Can I tell you there's a difference? And I learned this 44 years ago. No, y'all has not done away with that. I know, yeah, they make men pants and they make women pants. So, okay, they make women men dresses, they make women dresses. Do you want your man to put on a dress? Now, before you start laughing and cackling and getting all silly, do you want your man to put on a dress? 
if your man put on a dress, right, right away you're going to think, okay, he's gone the other way. You want your man to put on a wig. So there are garments meant for a man and there are garments meant for a woman. And everybody shouldn't see your buttocks, the, the shape of your buttocks, and they shouldn't see the print of your private parts. No, every man, because when you put on a pair of pants and another man sees you, that's what he's going to You can think what you want. You can lie to yourself. You can deceive yourself. When you put on a pair of pants, the first place that man's eyes is going to go is to your private part. So that's why y'all gave us a dress to cover ourselves, skirts to cover yourself. Doors, I've heard every story under the sun. Say, I've been young and now I'm old. And I still hear the same stories. No, yeah, he made men's hats and he made women's hats. So then women put on a scarf then. Can I tell you, you can beautify yourself with a scarf. But my head hurt. You get used to it. And can I tell you, whatever it takes to do what's right, you would do that too. So there are garments for a man, and there are garments for a woman. Hallelujah. But let's find out the clothes that will bring us honor, daughters of Zion. Let's go to Acts chapter 17, verse 10. And the Israelite brethren immediately sent away Saul, and Silas by night to the Bereans, whom coming there went into the synagogues of the Yardins. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and in that they received the word with all readiness. Now the Bereans, Saul and Silas, went to the Bereans to instruct and to teach them the way of Yah in a more perfect way. And they were noble men. You know why they were noble? Because they were honest. They were uncorruptible. They were unselfish. They were generous. They had a zeal. They had a heart to hear. They were ready of mind. Can I tell you, they went and they searched the scriptures, the Torah daily, whether those things that Saul and Silas taught them. They went back to the book to prove them wrong, no, because they knew those words were true. They just didn't know where it was in the book. Once they went back to the book and sought it out, can I tell you, they realized that these things were true. You do it, so well, where is it in the book that we shouldn't put on a man's garment? Go to Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5. Y'all say every woman that put on a man's garment, even a man that puts on a woman's garment, they are, are an abomination unto Almighty Yah. Look up the word abomination, daughter. Detestable, defiled, unclean. Y'all didn't want us looking like men. You don't have to show your shape off. Who's looking at you? We don't understand that we're so polluted in the way that we think. We think that every man is drawn to us. Well, every man is not drawn to you. Well, it's because you're old. Can I tell you, I've been young too. I was young. And can I tell you, I knew the way of a whoremonger and a harlot. And once I came to the knowledge of the truth, I knew I didn't want to live like that. And I didn't want every man looking at me. It was almost like a dog barking at another dog. And I didn't want that stigma. I wanted to make a change. And once I heard this truth, I did. I went back and I searched the book. And once I searched the book, I saw when well, Yah did not want his daughters dressing the way of the world. Can I say something else to you daughters? There's only two type of women and two types of men on this earth that practice righteousness and one that practice unrighteousness. Which category do you fall into? We've got to be more serious about, you call it soul, but it's our nephesh. We've got to be serious about it. We've got to say, y'all, whatever it takes. Or old-fashioned, what's wrong with being old-fashioned? Y'all's old-fashioned. 
He sent Yahshua HaMashiach. He came to fulfill that old-fashioned book that we must take heed to. Hallelujah. I want to go to Acts 17 and 12. It says, therefore, many of them. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Many of them believed. When they heard Saul and Silas, these people, they believed. They heard, many of them heard, and they believed. They believed. Women which were Greeks and men, not a few. It says not a few, but many. We're in an hour now, daughter, to find a daughter that's walking in righteousness. It's hard to find. Because we're all out there so busy doing our own thing. And that's the truth. You got this job, you got that job. You never make time for Almighty God. You don't even consider. You're out there driving, you need to be prayerful. Say when a woman prays, she should cover her head. So if your head's not covered, how's he going to honor that prayer? We never think of that. Well, he was talking, listen, you're out there running around doing this, you should be prayerful. Y'all's looking for prayer warriors in this hour. You can't go on your mother's prayer now. Your mother's been dead 20 years, and you still talking about mama's prayer. Well, what about your praying? What about your commitment and your faithfulness unto Yah? You're getting down on your knees and praying. Yah hears the prayers of the righteous. His ears are not open unto the prayers of that when it's not practicing righteousness. So we all fall short. This is... We got to take our lives more serious. Are we walking and keeping this Torah true? Y'all said obey all my commandments. He said, well, if you break one and you're guilty of them all. If you're committing adultery, daughters, you're sleeping with somebody else's husband, and you're married, you're committing adultery. He said, well, I'm just, well, if you're doing that, then you're breaking all the commandments of Yah. If you're a lie, you practice lying all the time. You're breaking all the commandments of Yah. If you can't say, I'm sorry, when you, found, you find yourself doing something wrong, then something is wrong. There's a deep root of bitterness in you. There's not a time that I can't tell my husband that I'm sorry if I've done something wrong. There's a time, if I do something wrong to a sister here, yeah, I get it right away. I want to say, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. But can I tell you, I don't have to tell Rayak I'm sorry. I'll just let him know what I did. I'll never do that again. Because I don't like him to be upset with me. Well, who is he? He's my head. There's no man that's going to love me. No more than... He loves me. Yahshua is the greater man. But as he, my husband follows Yahshua, I'm going to honor that man as the way I honor Yahshua HaMashiach. There's no other man that's going to love me the way my husband does. He's patient with me. He's shown me kindness. There's nothing I can't go to him and ask. I don't have to ask because the only thing I do is think it. I just go to him and mention it one time and can I tell you, I got it. So I want to honor that man because he's loved me much. And Doris, if your husband doesn't love you that way, it's because you haven't been honoring him as your head. I don't have to worry about one bill. I'm just faithful and committed to that man. He's loved me much. And I, we as black women have learned because society has taught us our men are no, they're no good. That our men are no good. Well, I wouldn't want nothing but a black man. And that's just me. If daughters listen, I didn't say get rid of your husband if he's of another race. Not another race, of another nationality. Because a race is when you're really, you're running but another nationality. I just want what Yah has given me. I only want what Yah has given me. Hallelujah. So the type of honorable daughter of Zion, she honors her husband in all her actions. I still have to work on it every day. An honorable daughter of Zion, she honors her husband. She doesn't disrespect him. She's not going to lie to him. She's not going to go out on She's going to do righteous. 
by her husband. And can I say this, daughter, the way you want to be treated. I don't like to be embarrassed, and I don't. The way I want to be treated, that's how I treat my husband. I don't like to be embarrassed, so if it's something I need to get it right, I get it right in the house with, when I'm with him. I wouldn't embarrass him, and I certainly don't want him to embarrass me. So we have to think, we have to consider that. And you're not that special. Well, he, can I tell you, a man can get a husband, even if he's in a wheelchair, even if he's on crutches. A man can always get a woman. We're the ones going to suffer in the end. You got five youngins. And can I tell you, most men are looking for that woman to come meet the need. You got to have some money. So we as the daughters of Zion, we must learn to recognize authority and our head. Hallelujah. But I want to go to Jubilees, chapter 36, verse 21. And Leah, Jacob's wife, died in the fourth year of the second week of the 45th Jubilee. And he buried her in the double cave near Rebekah, his mother to the left of the grave of Sarah, his father's mother. And all her sons and her sons came to mourn over Leah his wife, with him and to comfort him regarding her. For he was lamenting her, for he loved her exceedingly after Rachel, her sister, died. Verse 24, for she was perfect and upright in all her ways, and she honored Jacob, her husband. And all the days that she lived with him, he did not hear from her mouth a harsh word. Let me read that again. And all the days that she lived with him, she did not, he did not hear from her mouth a harsh word. For she was gentle and peaceable and upright and honorable. Daughters, we must learn how to govern what we say out of our mouths. And we must learn to honor our head, our husband man. I still must work on that. It's a daily chore. And sometimes we let things slip. But can I tell you, you can always, before the sun goes down, you can always amend that and get it right. You're thinking, well, I can get somebody else. Well, can I tell you, if the, you didn't get it right with the first one, you're not going to get it right with the second one. And I wouldn't even think about the third one. You have to learn from your experiences, daughters. And if I said, if you get it, if you marry that second time, most of the time, all the thing you have to do is sit back and think. What I did with that first one, I won't do it with the second. And can I tell you, if you get it right with the second one, you don't have to worry about the third one, because you got it right. Hallelujah. It says, And he remembered all her deeds, which she had done during her life. And he lamented her exceedingly, for he loved her with all his heart and with all, you call it his soul, all your nephesh. That's why I know I could never, I don't even consider that now, because I'm old. But I would have never married again because I have lived a wonderful life with Rayard Dali, who was my first husband. Can I tell you by his righteous deeds, it helped me stay on the straight and narrow path. Yes, I remember the things we did when we were, we all have sinned and fallen. There's no one on the face of this earth that hasn't fallen short. So we all have sinned and fallen short of the honor and the kindness of Almighty Yah. So you said, well, I remember what he used to be like. Well, I do too. And I remember what I used to be like too. 
And it wasn't because of my mother's prayers. It's because of the choosing of Almighty Yah. He said, that girl needs help. Let me reach down and uh, dig her up out the trash pile. You let me clean up a little bit and set her on the straight and narrow path. And I'm going to give her a messenger to teach and to guide her in this truth. Because there was nothing tough about me. Nothing. And there's nothing tough about you either. So Yah does the choosing. He choose the mother and don't choose the father. He choose the granddaughter but don't choose the grandson. So it's by the choosing of Almighty Yah. He calls us all. Come, come to my feast, come. And you say, I, 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 got, I got something else I need to do. Well, I'm working on the Shabbat. I ain't got time for that. Well, I need to go to the supermarket. Girl, I got to go bury my great, 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 great granddaddy. You, you always put him on the back burner. He should always be first in your life. Always. So, doors, we must learn, really, how to love our head, our husband man. Watch what you say out of your mouth. When you speak, you're speaking to your Yeshua HaMashiach because you see it in Him. We want the best now. We want the best. Your attitude and the way you do things, daughter, it speaks volume. The way you treat your husband is the way you treat everybody. You must love and honor and respect and humble yourselves. Hallelujah. Get the fight out of you. Praise God. Only this type of daughter retains honor. There's only one type. And I want to go to Proverbs 11 and 16. Grace, a gracious grace is the Roman goddess. The word grace is a goddess. It's a Roman goddess. She is pleasant, agreeable. She is precious. She has compassion. She is kind. She is polite. So daughters, are the, does any of those words describe you? If not, that's why I said we have to look at ourselves. We have to be honest with ourselves. And can I tell you, most of the times we're not honest with ourselves. We lie to ourselves. You know you weigh 155 pounds and you tell everybody you're 135. So I can look at you and judge. You're deceiving yourselves. Hallelujah. So a gracious and kind woman retains honor. And a, a tyrant men retain riches. So in order to be a gracious woman, you must be first pleasant, agreeable, you must show compassion, not on just your kinsmen daughters, but there are other people that are striving just like you, that know you and you know them. And you must show them kindness. And can I tell you, when you live in a community setting like this, everybody sees you, we see each other every day. I know those that I can depend on, and I know that, don't call that one because she's not going to get the job done. Don't call that one because she doesn't like to get up early. Okay, we need to go pray. We well, don't worry about her. She's not going to. You know those that labor amongst you. That's how we know each other. By our labor. Hallelujah. The woman is sitting on the other side of this camera. Whenever I need anything done, I know who to call. I call a whole kid. Because if I want the job to get done, I just call her. She'll gather the young women together. She'll make sure we get the job done. Hallelujah. It says, the actions of an honorable, precious daughter of Zion will always offer what is precious to anyone. Not just to whom she likes, but to anyone. Yahshua was anointed for death. Yahshua was anointed for death. And it was a woman that anointed Yeshua, HaMashiach. Not Jesus. Doris, if you go back and listen to the teaching, not this one that took place on last Shabbat, but the one before that, about Jesus, 
Hallelujah. And can I tell you, when I was growing up, Jesus was white. He was a long-haired hippie. And the picture of Jesus was in everybody's home. There were Jews that would go out in their, in their uh, station wagons and they were selling pictures of Jesus, a Bible, and they were selling you pictures of Martin Luther King. And everybody that I knew had it in their homes. And can I tell you, I'm so glad that we've come to the knowledge of this truth. See, we're ignorant because we don't like to study. And it's not our fault, daughters. Can I tell you, daughters, it's not our fault. It's because during slavery, they kept us from reading. It's not our fault. But once you come to the knowledge of the truth, and once you learn how to read, you can start picking up things. You can go on, on online and find out all this information is there. Jesus is made up. His name is Yahweh, the Creator, and His Son. Is, can I tell you, Doris, can I say something else to you? You say, well, they just say His name Jesus because it's more convenient. What's convenient about it? You're married. Your name is Betty. Your husband come home and start calling you Sue Gale. Would you like that? You say, oh, uh-uh. You know why you wouldn't like that? Because you're thinking, that, okay, he's had activities with Sue Gale. Your name is Betty, you want to be called Betty. My name is Raphael. I want Raphael to call me Raphael. My given birth name was Jean. But once we've come to the knowledge of the truth, I want to identify with your Shua Hamashiach. So I just changed it to Raphael. Raphael means Yahweh heals. And I chose that because through much trial and tribulations in my body, I knew that if I learned, started learning better ways to take care of myself, Yahweh would heal me. So that's why I chose the name Raphael. So when Rayak calls me, I don't want him calling me uh, Petunia or uh, Lucibel. I want him to call me Raphael. So they changed Yahshua's name to Jesus. He don't need any help with that. His name is Yahshua. And that's what he wants to be called. So when you pray, that's what you use Yahshua. I'm not trying to, I'm not worried about people can't you know, they can't handle that. I'm not worried about that. If they can't handle that, that's on you. Once you've been given this truth and you reject it, that's on you. I'm not going to lose one ounce of sleep and it's not going to stop me from calling on the name of Yahweh and Yahshua because I know who the Mighty One is. Hallelujah. So let me get on with the precious daughter of Zion. I want to go to Matthew chapter 26, verse 6. It's now, it says, Now when Yahshua was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came to him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment, and she poured it on Yahshua's head as he sat at me. But when the disciplined ones saw it, they had indignation, saying, to what purpose is this waste? They were upset. They were vexed. What for? Why? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Yahshua understood it, he said to them, Why trouble you, the woman? For she has wrought a tough work upon me. So this expensive oil, she knew that he was going to the state to die, not just for the world, but especially for me. And before this burial, she said, Let me go anoint Yahshua Hamashiach with this precious oil. See, they, the disciplined ones, they didn't weigh the matter out first. She anointed Yahshua HaMashiach because he was going to lay down his life for her. They didn't consider. They didn't think. They were hasty in their thoughts. She did a great thing that day. That's why Yah mentions this woman with the alabaster box of oil. 
daughters, we must anoint our heads with this truth. Take your walk with Yahshua HaMashiach more seriously. Anoint yourself daily with this truth, that your mind may be set free, that you're not caught up with what the world is doing and how they're doing it and they have uh, abortion rights. We shouldn't be caught up with that. Can I say something to your daughters? If you're at home, where you should be at night, not running around going to this cell and that cell, and you got, just wait till it's daylight, when it's convenient for you to go out. Because when I tell you, when you go out at night, in the dark, there are evil spirits lurking in the dark. Unclean men are lurking in the dark to see what they can pick up and what they can get away with. So if you're careful, you do all the stuff during the daytime. If you're working, you say, well, I'm not going to get off too late, then go home. Reschedule what you need to do and do it in the daytime. That's how you do it. I don't go shopping at night. You go, sure I do, I go out too. But I'm not going out lurk, and then I don't go out without protection. I go out with a strong man. When I go out, daughters, I go out with a strong man. Rab just doesn't send me out like that. He sends protection when we go out. So when I go out, I'm well protected with the messenger of Almighty God. Yeah, he's about six foot four. I said about 250 pounds. But I go out with protection when I go out. And we as women, we should be more careful. That's why women get red because they're somewhere they have no business being. They got on garments that they shouldn't have on. And you said, well, he was lusting for me and he shouldn't wear. If you cover yourself, if you cover yourself the way I cover your, myself, you won't have to worry about nobody taking advantage of you. You don't have to worry about no man doing a double take, saying, look, woo, woo. You don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about that. I cover myself as a righteous daughter of Tazaria. And it starts with getting your mind right. Once you get your mind right, you'll know what kind of attire to wear before Almighty Yah, that every man is not lusting for you. And doors we need, we need to be faithful and committed unto Almighty Yah. We must discipline ourselves, even without eating. We must discipline with our, ourselves without eating. You can't eat all day long and everything that they have new on the market. And the women of Yah should know how to cook and prepare meals, healthy meals. And then meals where you, where you feast, we just feast. It, we shouldn't feast every day, daughters. We as righteous women, we should learn to put down, turn down your plate and fast before Almighty Yah. That your mind is clear on how you must please Almighty Yah. Keeping His commandments and His statutes, that you break not His commandment. And that you always govern your thoughts every day. At the end of the day, you examine you. Don't worry about your cousin that cursed you out and your sister that told you off, but worry about what did you do? What did you say? How could you avoid that situation? Was I an example to the unsaved? Then you want to be an example, not just to the righteous, but to the unsaved also. So let us, daughters, take that alabaster bottle of oil Anoint yourself, your mouth, study to be quiet, to humble yourself. Most of all, daughters, study to learn how to treat your husband, to honor him with the greatest esteem. Hallelujah. So there's more this part. This is part one. There shall be a part two. And daughters, I have to make time. So I may not get back to you until next week, but look forward to part two, for it will be a blessing to your, your mind, your heart, hallelujah, and you can give your toda for what you receive, not from me, but from Rehach Dawi. Yahweh Baruch you, I hope this was a strength and a blessing to you. Remember, give us a thumbs up, press the like button, and always go back and subscribe. Can I tell you, go back and listen to this over and over till you grab hold to this truth. Because this truth will truly make you free. 
and who the Son makes free is free indeed. Yahweh Baruch you. Have an excellent, excellent Yom and Yahshua HaMashiach. I'm Ima Raphael. And on the other side of the camera, it's a Hosekia, my daughter that always assists me in whatever I need to get done. Hallelujah. Yahweh Baruch you again and Shalom, Shalom.